So alright guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to easily open up and root a second generation Fire Stick TV. Now guys, before this video fully begins, I do want to disclaim this. The particular Fire Stick that I am using, the model number will be on screen. And if you want to have guaranteed success, pick up the same exact Fire Stick model version that I have got. So far, every single one of these particular models has been rootable, and every time I've tried this, it has worked out. Now there are some hardware patched boards out there where no matter what you do, you won't be able to flash them over nor get them rooted. Now that's not to say that every Fire Stick Generation 2 out there can't have this done that is in a different model number. So if you feel like you're brave enough and want to try anyway, even though you might not have the same model of Fire Stick that I got, feel free to try and let me know in the comments down below how it turns out. But with that said, as you saw on screen, the tools that I've got are mostly plastic spudgers. I do have a metal one. I really don't recommend using any kind of metal prying tools during this whole process because if you knock off any of the small components on this board, you're going to have a heck of a time fixing them. But as you can see in the video, I took a plastic tool and I started making my way around the fire stick. Now depending on your fire stick, it usually takes some force and effort to get this off, but for the most part from my experience, it doesn't take a whole lot of work to get them off, and it took me maybe like 2 minutes to get mine apart. However, on video right now with this particular stick, it took me a little longer, but there is a reason for that and I'll explain that later. Anyway, once you got your stick apart, it should look something like this. What you want to do is point the micro USB end upward. Now this is the side of the board that we want to then proceed by pulling the heat spreader off of. I'll have a picture on screen in case you're confused by what I mean. You just want to make sure you're taking the correct heat spreader off your board. Now to take this heat spreader off, you just got to pry a tool in the front towards the HDMI jack. Bend it slightly, or you sometimes don't even have to bend it, just pry around, and it should start working its way off from front to back. Now every time I've done this, I've never really bent these up, however, if you're afraid and you have bent yours up to the point where it's unusable, you can actually install a Raspberry Pi heatsink later on if you desire. Or you could just buy the spare replacement parts online. Anyway, as you can see, I got the shielding off my fire stick. It took a little bit of time and effort, and I did end up using a sort of sharp tool on the end. I don't recommend doing that, but I did get it off. Now what you should be left with is a thermal pad either stuck on the side of the metal shielding or stuck to the chip itself. In most cases, it will be stuck to the chip itself, and that is a good sign that your stick has not been tampered with. Another good sign that your stick has not been tampered with, the resistors should be slightly covered up by the thermal pad itself. With the particular fire stick that you're seeing in on the video, I should say, this fire stick, somebody has already been in it before and has opened it up. I know it had boot issues before, which is why I decided to go through with this root recovery process to see if I could fix it, but the person that had this before has knocked the resistor clean off or it was just about to come off before I opened it up. So unfortunately the fire stick that you saw there in the video died. But we're still going to use it as a reference because I do do the same process later on but to another fire TV stick. Anyway, once you got the heat shielding off, you want to get a wire that's long enough to touch the HDM HDMI jack as well as that clock point on the board. I'll have a better picture on screen as well as in the description that you can download and look at if you need help finding this point. This clock resistor is rather small, and I'd like to say it's even tinier than the components I've worked with when it came to modding Xbox 360s, so some experience will be needed to actually probe this point successfully. Anyway, I do recommend having a friend nearby so you can short the two points out with your hands and be able to focus on the contacts while your friend just goes and plugs it into your computer. However, if you want to try it by yourself, get a clothing pin, clamp the wire to the HDMI jack, short the point out, and you should be able to do it by yourself at that point. However, with that said, before we short this point out, we need the software on the computer. I'm sorry for not explaining this earlier on, I just thought explaining how to get to this point would be easier overall. But yeah, now what we want to do is get back over to our computer. Unfortunately, you're going to need a Linux distro to do any of these steps. So either fire up a VM or just dual boot into a Linux uh, OS for the time being. But don't get me wrong, I will try to figure out whether or not this can work on Windows in the future. 
But for the time being, I'm going to be using Arch as my Linux OS flavor. And we're going to be following the guide through, uh, through Arch, basically. So some of my commands are different. I'll list them up on screen. But essentially, we want to install the required packages and then follow the guide. But to simplify things, just install the packages, go down into their description, download the amat.zip. From here, we want to navigate into the folders and find bootrom-step.sh. Now in this folder, open up a terminal, and we want to run that script as sudo. So be sure to type sudo sh bootrom-step.sh. If everything is successfully working, you'll see a waiting for bootrom message pop up on your screen. Now at this point in time, short the two points out on the Fire Stick itself, making sure you don't have the stick plugged in right now. You want to wait, just short the points out, then after you shorted them out, plug your stick into your computer. With any luck, the bootrom-step-sh script will find the stick. However, you might accidentally see serial mismatch. Don't worry if you see that, it means you either didn't hold the wire on long enough, or your hand slipped, or perhaps even you just didn't uh, get a proper connection to the clock point. It does mean that it did almost work, so just try again, and unplug the stick, short the point out again, plug it back in, and hopefully you should get it. Personally, it took me about four times for the two fire sticks that I have done this to before it actually worked. But once it's going, it should flash over twerp, a custom boot image, and a couple of other little things. It will take a good five to ten minutes, I'd like to say. And at this point in time, if you're worried about thermals, don't be. It will actually be rather cool to the touch because we're not actually booting into any OS at this point in time. Also, if I didn't mention it, once the boot ROM message goes away, you'll see press enter on your screen and remove short, so remove the short and press enter. But with that said, if everything flashes over successfully, it should say you're stuck in fast boot mode. Now at this point in time, we could unplug the stick, plug it in the TV, power it on, and look and see what it does and see if it's working. If it's working, your device will be stuck on the bootloading screen and you won't get nothing. That is good, that means everything we've done thus far is good to go. Typically, I don't do this, so I just left my fire stick plugged into the computer after them steps were done. Then I went in and launched the fast boot script. So I went sudo sh fastboot stepsh This should boot us into the recovery mode and take us out of the boot loop. So if you really wanted to, you could plug your stick into your TV and look at the twerp menu. Although if you do it this way, you will have to navigate everything manually using OTG because your remote won't work in this menu. So what I recommend is connecting up to your device just by typing in adb. A shell in the terminal and you should automatically connect up to it if it's plugged in your computer. Now from this point in time what I do is I wipe the cache although in the video I did this backwards my bad. I recommend always wiping the cache and I always recommend to make sure you have some space on your fire stick before we install these apps. But yeah, as you can see what I did here was I pushed a file over just by typing in adb push and then dragging in the zip for the Magix APK. Now this zip could be anything. You can install Lineage OS or any other Android-based TV OS version that's compatible with your stick if you desire. However, I just want stock but rooted. What we're, root, what we're pushing over is just a means to an end to get Magix installed to allow us to have root access on stock Fire OS. Anyways, you saw I pushed the app over to the SD card now from there, I just went and typed in twerp install app-release.zip in the same location. Now the hardest part is basically almost done. All we have to do from this point in time is just power the stick off and unplug it. The way I did this was just shell reboot-p. I'll have the command on screen. But I essentially powered the stick off and now I'm going to unplug it, put the actual thermal pad back on as well as the heat spreader, and then I'm going to plug it into my TV and with any luck everything is still working out. So with the heat spreader on and the thermal pad, we're, we're going to plug the stick in to our TV and plug in power. If everything is working, you'll be out of that stuck boot loop animation and your Fire OS should boot up as normal. Now from here, we're not quite done. There's one more thing we need to do when it comes to the Magix rooting application. 
the actual root zip itself is the APK file, but to make things simpler, I just decided to break them up into two parts and I'll link them down below in the description. What we want to do is install the app-release APK file. Now you can choose any method that you desire to get this task done. I decided to just use ADB, so I just typed in ADB install, and then I dragged the APK in, and it installed it remotely to my Fire Stick. Now from this point in time, if everything is successful, Magix should be installed. You'll have an icon which you couldn't have had before, and that will mean everything is working. To test that out, all I did was go into my terminal, open up an ADB shell, type in SU, and we should see a message on screen asking us for basically admin priv privileges, root privileges. So you just want to accept that. And then from there, you have root privileges. You can turn off ads, disable the custom launcher, enable a custom launcher, you know, all kinds of features. Now that's basically it for this video. If your stick is working, what you can do is put the casing back on or make your own case. I'll have a 3D printable file at some point in time for a case replacement. If yours happens to get really broken, in the description in case you just want to print out a custom case. But yeah guys, as long as you follow my guide correctly, you should be fine. But with that said, I'm going to leave today's video off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. Going there, so we just gotta connect back up. But yeah, you can even control it with the mouse, you can use keyboard act. If you're on Arch, if you're on GNOME, it's gonna be in a different location.